another edition of Coach's Corner brought to you by Fast Cafe. I'm your host, Hannah Allison, and tonight we're joined by baseball head coach, Kenny Thomas. Coach, thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. Right, before we get into specifics, we're going to talk about three former baseball players, Sean Miller, Tyler Moore, and Ty Barkell. Two were drafted and another signed an MLB contract. How do you and your staff develop so many players to sign professional contracts? Well, you know, it's been, it's kind of become part of our program. Uh, we've had a bunch of guys and you know, I'm not sure, but somebody told me the other day we've had more players drafted out of USC Aiken in the last four years than any D2 school in the country. Now, I don't know how you find that out, but that's what somebody had told me, and it's become a big part of our program. And, you know, a few years ago I worried about losing juniors all the time, you know, because it can hurt your team. But now that it's part of our program, we, we use it in recruiting. I mean, it's, if you want to play pro baseball, it's a good place to come. And... Uh, those three were obviously great players. Um, uh, one fact that a lot of people don't realize is we've had a top 10 round draft choice for the last four years. And and I, I know there's no Division II school in the country yeah. can say that. So we're, we're big into player development, that's for sure. I've always, you know, I've, I have some pro background in when I used to work for the St. Louis Cardinals. So. I love player development, so. You know what to do with them. I tell them no matter how good you are when you get here, we're gonna make you better. Awesome. All right, we're going to switch gears and talk about the season opener. It's February 4th with Lincoln Memorial. What are your expectations on the team this year? Well, you know, it's, uh, uh, it's a new team and uh, a lot of new faces. And, and so uh, I, I love this team, I'll tell you that. And the way I've been describing it to people for the last couple of weeks, it's, it's balanced. And I don't really know how to describe that except it's just, it's not like you have these four players that are on this level and then you got another four down here it drops off pretty good they're very balanced and uh it's it's a team that uh offensively could be okay defensively could be okay and pitching could be okay if all those work out it'd be nice be so uh, uh we're really excited but you know it could opening day probably will have five new faces in the lineup for fans that, that they don't know these guys we so. have some questions about the incomers in a little bit Right. So it's 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 an interesting team. So I'm really excited about it. Good. And how difficult do you think the non-conference schedule is this year? Well, it's it's, it. it's tough. It's really tough. You know, I, I I guess I lost my mind there when we had the bye weekend in April, and I I got Florida Southern to come in here and and play us on Friday night, Saturday and Sunday. They had a bye that weekend too. So, so those are night games. There'd be a Saturday, a Friday night game, a four o'clock game on Saturday afternoon, and a one o'clock game on Sunday. But you know, you add them uh, that we've never played before. Yeah. And you add Catawba, that's obviously a tremendous team. ball club, Newberry. So, and Lincoln Memorial is, is always tough the first weekend. They play us really good. So the non-conference schedule is probably as good as it's ever been. Okay. And y'all aren't facing every Peach Belt team this season. Can you talk to us about the ones that you are facing? Well, you know, it's uh, – it's a rotation, so it's the same ones we played last year, and this is the second year of the rotation. And uh, there's so many teams in the Peach Belt now, there's just not enough weekends to play everybody. So we play 10 weekends, three game series. Uh, February is the toughest February we've ever had. You know, after we finish with Lincoln Memorial, we jump straight into conference and play Armstrong and then Lander and then go on the road to Georgia College. So it's it's a very tough February. Um, you know, I, I, I'm a fan of, of, of playing everybody. I wish we could play everybody yeah. in the conference, but because um, you never know yeah. whether you're getting the luck of the draw or not by playing exactly. a team that's not as good. But um, it's such a balanced league. Everybody's good. There's no easy. There's no easy wicket. One good positive this year is we had voted. We voted finally that we can play, if both schools agree, we play Friday, Saturday, Sunday instead uh -huh. of a doubleheader on Saturday. So, More baseball. It, it's just a doubleheader in our sport is tough. Yeah. You know, these young men get out there, a home doubleheader at 1 o'clock, my guys are on the field at 10-15. It's an all-day thing. And it's an all-day. It's hard on them. And uh, So this year, seven of our 10 weekend series are Friday, Saturday, Sunday, no doubleheader, <laughs> unless it rains and you yeah. would play a doubleheader. So, you know, we're excited about that. Uh, unfortunately, the three that are not are home ones, so uh, 
fans will have to endure the doubleheader just right. like we do. So That's all right. All right, and we talked about you having a balance of players. You all actually have a lot of upperclassmen. How do you think that's going to help your team on the field this year? Well, it's a junior-dominated team, and uh, that, that's a good thing. Uh, but we've got the best senior leadership, I believe, of any team I've had here. Uh, we've got some seniors that are going to be big, big-time role players. And uh, on offense, you look at Chaz Powell and, and, and Max Schoen. Uh, you know, you got Doug Ard. They're all seasoned, have played a lot. You go over on the pitching side of it, there's some really good arms yeah. over there. Then guys like uh, Hutto and Marlowe and Davis and Coley. And, I mean, it, those guys have been through it, you know. So... Uh, real positive to have that senior leadership and our four captains uh, Chaz Powell and Max Schoen and Joe Marlowe and Coley have done a tremendous job leading our team so got a lot of good seniors that can that, that will contribute that's that's the good thing that will contribute that's good to hear a starting day lineup do you have any projections and earlier you mentioned there might be five new faces can you tell us a little bit about that well I got about ten more days to decide but uh you know catching uh, we got four catchers I've never carried four catchers before so uh, all of them experienced mm -hmm. they're they're either juniors or seniors so uh, they're all experienced any of them can play back there uh, you know I, I, I'm not real sure exactly which direction but Max Schoen has done a great job back there. Charlie Padilla, junior catcher, can really throw, yeah. has done a great job. So uh, at first base, we'll have a newcomer over there in Brian Pierre, a, a transfer, D1 transfer, sophomore. Uh, at second base, uh, gosh, we could go with a, a junior from New York, uh, or we can go with our local freshman kid from South Aiken, Joey Smithers. So either Sky, uh, Skyler McCardo or Joey Smithers. Shortstop is a junior, junior college transfer. Mm -hmm. Ty Ammerman, a tremendous player, one of my favorites, uh, the way he plays. I call him a silent leader. He just goes out and plays. Calm and confidence. Really, really well. We'll have a junior at third, uh, two junior college transfers there. One of them's gonna play third. Uh, left field will be Chaz Powell. Center field, Juco transfer and Mitchell Price, great player, can really run, can hit. Um, right field, you know, it's uh, now going, it's time, that's what I keep saying, but I've got a Juco guy there in Luke Westenberg, but now going's been with us three years. He's a redshirted sophomore, broke his hand last year, unfortunately, early in the season, missed the entire year, so. Uh, you know, we have some choices. We have a, we, one of the things that this year's team is you're going to have two pretty good players, pretty good hitters sitting on the bench every day so you can bring them into the game at the right time. So it's, a, again, balanced, balanced team. It never hurts to have that much depth. Yes. Uh, recently there was a preseason poll released. Uh, Y'all, it was a D2 preseason poll, top 40 teams. USC Aiken was not in it. Do you think that's lack of respect? Does that motivate y'all to do more? Do the players Do you know who them know? fools were that voted on that? <laughs> I do not. I, I absolutely do not. don't either, but uh, it's a, a popularity thing. And uh, uh, yes, our guys took that as a slap in the face. I think that's the first time in the 10 or 12 years yeah. that we hadn't been in the top 30 in the preseason poll. And uh, it was really weird. There was some good Peach Belt teams left out of that. Uh, Columbus State wasn't in there. I, that's one that comes to mind. I mean, mm. there was some really good Peach Belt teams left out of that. So, uh, you know, that was a little surprising. And uh, my granddaughter texted to me <laughs> on Christmas Eve. What a nice and, uh, thing. And, you know, so did it tee me off? Yeah, but does it matter? No. Uh, you know, it matters where you are at the end of the year. But I do think gotcha. our players took at us a slap in the face. Gotcha. A little fuel to the fire. Um, where do you think the team's going to rank as far as PBC and in the region this year? You know, I don't know. Uh, I don't think the Peach Belt coaches poll has come out yet. It has but, not. not you yet. know, and that coaches poll is so crazy because all of us, uh, we don't know. Heck, I don't <laughs> know. And I, You know, it's a guessing game from year to Absolutely. year. And uh, uh, so they don't know. Other coaches don't. I don't either. And sometimes... You know, historically, you go off of last year. Yeah. You know, that's kind of how you, you rank it. And uh, same thing in that national poll. Historically, you go off the uh, last year. year's. But, you know, we had we had a team 
We had a team out of the Peach Belt that had a losing record last year, didn't even make the conference tournament, was in the top 25, and that was kind of surprising. And hmm. so I, I don't know what they're, you know, I really don't. When I got ready to vote, I, I really didn't know how to vote. I mean, I really didn't. So it's a guessing game. And, uh, you know, you can ask me this question in April. I might know a little better then, you more. know. All right, and this past, se this past season, two of your coaches moved on to other jobs. However, you did pick up two brand new coaches. Can you tell us a little about them and your off-season hires? Well, you know, uh, Jason Walt been with me for a while, and uh, I just hung up talking to Jason on the way. He's up there at Radford. Uh, uh, it was a tough decision for him, and I, you know, I tried to help him with the decision, and you know, it was a pay raise for him, but. Uh, he just got off the phone and said there's 36 inches of snow on the ground there. So, uh, uh, you know, it, I, I was glad to see Jason uh, get the opportunity if that's what he wanted to do. And uh, But we hired Phil Disher, a local product uh, that took his play, took Jason's place. Phil played at South Aiken, played at South Carolina, uh, played four years of pro ball, had a career-ending hip injury. And uh, so he's done a great job. Our players really uh, relate to him really well. So uh, he's done a good job. And then DJ King uh, suddenly left me in September, uh, got a job offer. And, you know, one of my uh, former coaches called me and said, I believe you've got more assistant coaches around in bigger jobs than any coach probably in the Peach Belt, and I'm sure that's right. But DJ left me, went to Tennessee Wesleyan, uh, got a good opportunity, and uh, it was a it was a good move for him. Uh, again, pay raise and uh, uh, a good opportunity for him. So we hired Ben Donath, former player. Uh, you know, Ben played for us for two years, and uh, you know, uh, I, I love helping our former players and our former players that want to be coaches. And uh, you know, I've come to the conclusion that. Um, you go around the Peach Belt, and uh, there's three or four of my former coaches at Peach Belt schools now. And uh, then you branch out a little bit. Yeah. There's three or four more at, at at D1 schools or other other schools. And uh, so, I mean, I, I feel like that not only am I, you know, destined or it's my job to to develop players but yeah. maybe develop young coaches and yeah. uh, and I've, I've understood that it used to really bother me when coaches left because it is a transition period and it's tough it puts a lot more work on me but I, I feel like that's part of my responsibility to this game and this mm -hmm. game's been very good to me and I think it's a, a part of my responsibility and I owe back to the game to develop young coaches and if they move on great you know one of them suckers gonna take my job <laughs> yeah. one of these days you, know? you never know so that's good though well that wraps up another edition of fats coaches corner thanks for joining us coach Thank be you. sure to tune in next time as we partner with fats cafe to bring you the latest information with usc aiken athletics